Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Jackson Crawford. A few minutes of quick thoughts about a subject that I'm seeing more and more talk about lately, and that is the speculation that the Phoenician alphabet might be the direct, immediate ancestor of the Elder Futhark, the oldest form of the runic alphabet used in writing Old Norse, or the ancestor of Old Norse, and the ancestor of the other Germanic languages, such as Old English and Old High German. The question here is not really whether Phoenician is ultimately the ancestor of the runes, because uh, clearly it is. The Phoenician alphabet is the ancestor of all alphabetic traditions, with the exception of Korean Hangul, and even that I understand has been debated, at least conceptually. The Phoenician alphabet is the first alphabet, right? It is the first step that human writing uh, took in its sort of final step, which is actually representing discrete speech sounds with a particular symbol that's always used for that sound, right? Prior to the Phoenician alphabet, there had been syllabaries where you would have one symbol for each uh, syllable. Um, and halting steps toward alphabetization here, there, and yon. But it really is the original alphabet. And from it are derived the other alphabets in the Mediterranean and broader world. So for example, the Greek alphabet is a direct adaptation from the Phoenician alphabet. If the Phoenician alphabet, however, were the direct, immediate ancestor of the runes, I would expect a lot more evidence for that than I see. It's not impossible, right? But it's one of those things where you want to see some actual evidence, right? Because it's fairly unlikely. It's not a, uh, a very obvious solution to this problem of ruin origins, right? So if there were a lot of Phoenician loan words in Old Norse, that would make me uh, lean a lot more toward uh, direct Phoenician origin. But I don't see any loan words in the old Germanic languages that uh, I think are convincingly explained as Phoenician loan words. You would really expect this in particular if they had borrowed the idea of writing from them, because often when a language borrows a writing tradition from another, it borrows words for writing from that tradition. So for example, even though the Norse were already writing in runes when they encountered the Roman alphabet, they use a verb for writing in the Roman alphabet that is derived from Latin scrivere, to write, they use scriva, right, as opposed to uh, rita for writing runes. You would also expect that the resemblance of letters would be strongest in letters that had similar sounds, right? So you see some letters in the Phoenician alphabet that look like letters in the Elder Fudak runes, but they're not the letters that have the same sounds, right? So even allowing for the kind of left to right mirroring that often happens when letters are borrowed from one alphabet to another. The letter that means the L sound in runes looks like the letter that means the G sound in the Phoenician alphabet, right? And that's not what you would expect. You would expect that, you know, you would borrow a similar letter for writing a similar sound, not that you would just sort of borrow uh, at random and replace the values of letters with, with different values. You would also expect uh, that there wouldn't be so many similarities with other derived alphabets. What I mean is there are letter shapes that point pretty clearly toward one of the intermediate other alphabets borrowed from Phoenician, not directly from Phoenician itself. I am in a little bit of a minority in believing that the Roman alphabet is not the direct source of the runes. I think that instead it was actually a regional Greek alphabet this is a subject that I'm not going to discuss at length here. I've discussed it at length in a video called The Origin of the Runes. And I think one of the best arguments for this is that the letter O, the, the O sound in runes, the othalon rune, looks like the Greek omega and also comes at the end of the Elder Freelic alphabet, although it alternates with D in early inscriptions. And then you have letters like R and F, which are often pointed to as... Uh, as, as evidence that the runes are borrowed from the Roman alphabet. In fact, those letters were used with those sound values in parts of Greece and in other alphabets derived from the Greek alphabet, right? The Greek alphabet isn't one monolithic thing. It's not just the alphabet that, uh, you know, the fraternity and sorority signs are written in.
there's a lot of regional Greek alphabets. So those are not easily explained by direct reference to Phoenician, where you don't have letters that look like an F or an R, and you don't have an O letter that looks like an omega or a, a runic othala. So it's not impossible, right, that the Phoenicians or the Carthaginians reached uh, northern Europe during their ascendancy. They certainly reached pretty far into Africa, uh, so it's not impossible they reached deep into the other direction. But I would want some evidence for it, right? It's a little bit like if I come up to you and I say, I've got a PhD in Scandinavian languages and philology, and I am a very wealthy man. It's not impossible but you'd want a lot of evidence for it. And I just don't see that evidence. Not directly anyway, but of course, the runes are part of the broader family of Mediterranean and European alphabets that are ultimately borrowed from the amazing innovation of the Phoenician alphabet. All right. Well, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the very best.